Okay, I'm going to go ahead and record this. Uh, this is our final session um, of the review for the um, WGRN solar class. So we're going to be reviewing chapters 10 and 11. So let me go ahead and jump in and we'll go through the review of chapter 10. All right, so um, chapter 10 is, um, is the chapter about testing and commissioning. So a checklist of all of the steps or tasks that remain unfinished on a PV installation project is typically referred to, and, and the term here that we use is a punch list. You're just kind of making a list of everything that's not done. That's usually something that you would go over with the customer or the end user, say, okay, we still need to do this, we still need to do that, uh, get sign off on it and then proceed on. And as you check them all off, when you're all done, you're all done. A proper lockout tagout procedure should include all the following steps, except ensure that all devices and disconnects are in the closed position, attack a locking mechanism to the device to make sure somebody can't turn them back on, attach a tag telling people why the system's off, and then notify everybody. Sounds like those are all right, except actually you wanna make sure that your devices and disconnects are in the open position, not the closed position. Open means turned off, closed means turned on. Those are always a little counterintuitive terms there. Okay, so the next one, which of the following is not an electrical test normally conducted during the commissioning process? Well, there's polarity tests. You want to make sure that all of your connections have the right polarity. Resistance, um, that would be, you know, like it could be a continuity test or to see if there's excessive resistance. Performance testing of your units, we'll talk a little bit about that. So a reactance test, that's just something I made up. So it's not one that you want to have in your arsenal of tests when you're starting the system up. Which of the following steps in the commissioning process will identify that the charge controller is not working? Well, this would be a system function test. So you want to just double check, make sure all of your systems are functioning. Usually the product specifications will tell you how to go through that. And then this is one of those that you can double check to see if the system as installed is performing as you would expect it to perform. Remember, all of our sizing is based on um, standard test conditions, which are going to be 25 degrees Celsius and a, a thousand watts per square meter. And the watts per square meter, the radiance typically affects amps and the temperature affects volts. So in this case, we're dealing with a situation where we've measured everything, we're at 42. Well, that's going to be warmer, so you expect voltage to be less. And a radiance is at 934. Again, we're expecting um, the system to uh, then have fewer amps than normal. And it's telling us the D rate factor is 0.87. So um, that's with all our losses, our system losses. So what you're hoping to do is test at the panel, what's the irradiance, what's the temperature of the cell, not the ambient air temperature. And then you're going to see, okay, well, how much would I expect the system to be producing under these conditions? So you've got to factor in loss as well. Well, looking at this, we would expect it's a 5kW system. So it's going to be less than 5kW. These two, you know, are pretty much per panel, but we're asking what is the production at the inverter? So that would be the whole array. So it's either going to be 3.73 kilowatts or 4.06. Well, I have the math here in the answer, but I, I know it's 3.73. So how did we get that? Well, what we found is we take the 29, uh, the VMP is 29.8 volts. So it's like a string sizing calculation. We know the delta, the difference between the temperature of 42 and 25 is 17. The temperature coefficient 0.485% per degree Celsius. We get that from the specs of the panel. So we know we would expect this to be producing 8.245% less voltage than at standard test conditions. So we would multiply 29.8, which is the VMP, times 91.755%, 
or we know each panel should be producing about 27.34 volts. Now, we, it sounds exact, but it's going to be, you know, more or less. Then for the um, amps, we know that at 934 watts per square meter over 1,000 is 0.34 or 93.4% times uh, the amps at STC, the IMP, and that's going to be 7.8. So you multiply 27.34 times 7.8456, and we find that we would expect each panel to be producing about 214 volts times 20 panels. So we know that our array should be producing about 4,290 watts, but we have to then derate that through the system. So at the output of the inverter, we would expect about 3,732 watts. If you're getting something around that number, then you know your system is working properly. And that's how you would do it. Uh, uh, this can be a sticking point because your customer might say, hey, you said this was a 5KW system and it's only producing 3.7. Well, that's because of the conditions. And it's a 5KW DC production, but the AC production has to be derated for a number of factors. So try and make sure you level set that ahead of time so that they don't expect that they're going to be getting 5KW of production at all times. Okay, so let's jump on to chapter 11. Chapter 11 is the um, troubleshooting, maintenance and troubleshooting. So a proper maintenance and troubleshooting regime should always begin with, well, of course, periodic monitoring. You want to check that. And systems today are getting pretty easy to monitor. You can just go on your phone, check it. So, so it's, it's a lot easier than it used to be. The monitoring can be done remotely. All of the following are, pro are common problems caused by a poor design, except, well, if you do a poor, poor site survey, you know, you think north is south and south is north or whatever, uh, you didn't account for shading, uh, failure to um, making your systems undersized, that's always a problem, but oversizing wire and conduit, never a problem except maybe an installation. It might be a little tough to um, install, install the bigger conduit, install bigger wire. A grid tied PV system is generating less power than expected. What is the, fo what's, uh, the following will likely cause this situation? Heat fade. We'll talk a little bit about what heat fade is. Reverse polarity, that's something you should find right at the beginning. So the grid's down. Well, if the grid was down, it'd be producing nothing. And there's a ground fault. Again, it would be producing nothing. So heat fade here is the likely culprit. And like I said, we'll explain what heat fade is here in just a second. A grid tied PV system has suddenly stopped working completely. Okay, so heat fade, no, nope, that usually only affects one panel. Shading, that affects one panel or strings or a few panels, but not everything. Dirt on the panel, same thing. Ground fault, the whole system should shut down if there's a ground fault. So that, but of course, the most common reason for the system to stop producing is the grid is down. Batteries in a standalone system are failing prematurely. Which of the following is not likely a cause? And I should point out right here that on the ETA test, they won't use negative statements like this. They would say, which of the following is likely a cause? Uh, I like to do not because then I can give you three that are one that's not. It's a little bit of a teaching thing, but that can be confusing. So on the exam, there should not be no double negatives uh, in your questions. Okay, so what's a cause? Okay, well, excessive loads, that will cause things to fail prematurely. Poor temperature control will cause it to, to fail. Too many batteries in series, that would just basically mean higher voltage. Too many in parallel, that can cause problems. So too many in series, I mean, the system's not gonna work at all. So um, it'll be configured for the wrong voltage. A weak module reacting with excessive voltage loss due to increased cell temperature is known as heat fade. It, think of it like a heat stroke for a solar panel. Um, you know, you may just see that this thing, you know, it, it, it reacts badly to, to high temperatures. Okay, so that is it. Uh, chapters 10, 11, very, very simple. 
Um, hopefully, don't spend a lot of time on these chapters. In the intervening week here, you've got a week before we get together next Friday for the hands-on lab, a bit of the hands-on lab portion and the exam. I'll send you an email with the, um, with the meeting room facility. It'll be in Columbus, Ohio. That's all I know at the moment. I've just sent another note trying to lock in the location. So I'll get that to you. We'll meet there um, probably nine o'clock next Friday. And then um, we'll get together on Saturday at the uh, site where we're going to be installing. Uh, we'll, we'll keep an eye on the weather. At the moment, it's calling for scattered thunderstorms. That's probably worth nothing because it's a week away. Um, but, but if it does appear like the weather's going to cooperate, um, of course, we'll be at it uh, unless there's a torrential downpour or lightning in the area. Uh, we'll try and get it done on Saturday. Okay, I think that's pretty much it. Uh, in the meantime, if you have any questions, send me an email and I will see you all next Friday, okay?